Paul and I were feeling our oats right about then. Uh, we had done the Good Brian song, we had done good work together, and we were feeling that we were a good team. And my dad's company, Danny Thomas Productions, was dormant after all those years of doing so many things. And so I went to Dad and I said, uh, you want to light this place up again? And uh, Paul and I will run it. And he said, sure. And we did that. Uh, it was kind of an interesting thing to do it for me because, you know, uh, being the son of Danny Thomas is not uh, always uh, the greatest thing to do, uh, to be in the business. It, get, it opens doors, you know, certainly, but uh, uh, it, people look at you as potentially probably a loser or somebody that's only here because of that, because of who you are. So you've got to work uh, much harder and smile a lot and no job too small which is what I've told every in-law or relative I've ever had who I've given a start to, is there is no job too small. You smile all the time and you do twice as much as everybody else. Otherwise, you don't get to keep the job because people think you got it. If it's a tie, you lose, in my opinion, uh, if, you, if you have connections. So uh, that's how I helped train relatives of mine and that's how I looked at it. That was just my credo and I went out of my way my one goal was to always have people say, and they used to say it a lot as I was coming through, was, I didn't expect you to be this good. Or, you know, I had a whole different impression of what you might be. I didn't think, you know. It, it, so that was always my goal, was to, to have people feel that. I know many thought it, and many, many people said it, which may, always made me feel good, that they did not expect me to produce as well as I was producing you know, whatever I was doing for them at the time, and the attitude at which I took it, took the job. And so going into Danny Thomas Productions was going to be fun because Paul and I are going to run the place, but not sure it was going to, you know, it had a little bit of a, uh, I was a little, a length, had a little angst about it. And uh, it was fun, it was fun. We, Paul and I had a ball, it was fun to be, be the bosses. And, uh, and we called our own shots, tried not to lose too much of my dad's money, uh, which we didn't. And uh, we made some very good product there. We made a movie called Bloodsport that I'm very proud of with, uh, uh, oh God, Ben Johnson and Gary Busey, um, which was really terrific. And we did the practice while we were there, which was great with my father. It was a role that was just an extraordinary role written by an extraordinary writer, Steve Gordon, who wrote Arthur. Uh, and uh, Steve was just one of the great talented writers of all time. Unfortunately, died very young. Heart disease was in his family, and he died young. But he wrote a great part, and from the moment we started talking about it, I was thinking about my dad for this, because I knew he wanted to do something. And uh, we, uh, the script came together wonderfully. And it was kind of like the last angry man of doctors, the last really good doctor in town that made the house calls, that gave a damn about his patients and so on. And uh, I went to NBC at the time, and I said, uh, uh, those were the Marvin Antonowski days. Uh, and uh, I went to NBC at the time, and I said, uh, we'd like to cast my father. And nobody thought that was a good idea. They just didn't see him. They had this image of uh, Danny Williams from the Danny Thomas show and make room for daddy guy and whatever. And they just didn't see him as Lee J. Cobb, really, which was kind of the image of that, uh, kind of the mold of which we wrote that. Uh, and uh, so I called my sister Marlo and I said, you know, he's read the script and he really likes it. And I got to go tell him that. Uh, I have floated the name and uh, nobody wants him. That was very tough for me to have to say that to my father. But Marlon and I went together and uh, talked to him together and said, look at, you know, Marlon Brando just tested for the Godfather. Marlon Brando had to test for the Godfather. Why don't you test for this? He said, okay. And uh, because, you know, if, uh, thankfully we had the Marlon Brando thing to tell my father after, you know, all those years on television and after producing you know, you know, all these hits with Sheldon and everything and, and all of his television specials that were record-breaking television specials at the time in the top five all the time. And uh, uh, he and Bob Hope have this record of all these 
the highest rated television specials of the decade. And uh, I had to go tell them that the network didn't want them. It was very difficult. So we gave him the Marlon Brando uh, uh, analogy, and uh, he uh, let his hair go grayer. We put a mustache on him, and Chuck Groden, who's a very good friend of Marlon's, worked with him as the director, and we did a couple of test scenes. And then Marlon went in and asked for an interview, uh, asked for a meeting with uh, the NBC gang, and they said, sure, great, because they wanted her back on television yesterday, you know. So she went in and uh, uh, s they took the meeting. She said, I want to show you something. And she put in the cassette of Dad. And uh, he, they said, wow, that's great. And he got the part. And we got a telegram uh, when we got picked up. And uh, as it does sometimes when they want to cement the deal, the telegram said, that we were picked up for tw Pilot Plus 12, and Danny Tom, the part of Jules Verne, Danny Thomas is of the essence. In other words, they're not gonna pick this up unless my father plays this in the telegram. So I gave him, I framed that and highlighted that and gave it to my father, which was quite touching for me. Now, how was it working with your father on that level? It's a pain in the ass. <laughs> uh, when I said, he was, he was great. He was great. Uh, he had, two lines of thought about it. One was, if I raised you right, and you, then you are right with what your point of view is, or I was making people laugh before you were born, what do you know? It was, it was somewhere in between, you know, depending on the day. It was very difficult after a run through to say, Dad, that wasn't funny, you know, but I'd have to. I said, it didn't work. I mean, it didn't work. I said, it didn't work. I mean, it's just, you know, we talk about it, and then all of a sudden I'm in these, these debates and voices are getting a little louder. Uh, like when I was, you know, like a kid on his own set, you know, but now I'm the boss. And so, you know, you, you, you feel a little shorter when you're talking at that moment in time because you do have memories of being a child with this man. Uh, but uh, overall, it was a great experience. Uh, he was as happy as could be. He loved, loved playing the part. And we loved producing it for him. Well, Paul was very helpful. You know, I was, thank God I had a partner. Because there were times when we were in total disagreement, my father and I. Total disagreement. And uh, usually Paul, um, well, I would say 90% of the time, Paul and I were on the same page about something. So having Paul agreeing with the point of view was helpful. But, I, you know, I don't think I ever truly lost a battle with my father uh, if I if there need I mean there weren't that you know there weren't numerous battles but there were the usual give and take discussions about how to do something and if, and if it didn't work we do it twice you know okay so let's do it again but let's do it that way too you know so we have choices it wasn't it wasn't uh, but it, it is you know fathers and son do have their dynamics